This week we're presenting the program from Tono, which is in Iwate Prefecture in the northern part of Honshu. It's about a four hour train ride from Tokyo to get here. It's quite cold despite the very nice weather today. Hello, I'm Peter Barakan, and my new partner on this program is Mami Kikuchi. Thank you, Peter. I'm very pleased and excited to be a part of this program. Welcome to Weekend Japanology, coming to you on NHK World Television and Radio Japan. And we are now standing in front of the traditional house particular to this area. And our guest on the program today is a shakuhachi player who lives right here in Tono. His name is Kodo Araki V. Thank you very much for being with us on the program today, Mr. Araki. There's right. something about this setting and that sound that I think both of them were just made for each other. Mm. It's a yeah. perfect combination. Really? And you can even oh. hear the chirps of the birds far away right. with the shakuhachi sound. Mm. It's very nice. Mr. Kodo Araki is the fifth generation to be so named. He was born into a family of shakuhachi players going back to the Edo period. And I don't think there was any doubt in anybody's mind ever that a shakuhachi player was what he was going to be. And uh, you have the flute in the West, and, but the shakuhachi plays much more deeper sound. Now let us give you the brief explanation of the shakuhachi. The shakuhachi is a very simple musical instrument. It's just a single length of bamboo with finger holes made in it. The name shakuhachi derives from its length, which is approximately 55 centimeters. Literally, shakuhachi means 1.8 shaku, an ancient Japanese unit of measurement. There are five finger holes, four down the front and one at the back. It's played by blowing into the top of the bamboo through a hole known as the utaguchi. The notes are produced by covering the finger holes. Shakuhachi are made from a species of bamboo called madake, which grows in the wild. After the bamboo is cut, it has to be dried in a shady place for two to three years to get rid of the oil in it. To give the bamboo the correct shape, it has to be carefully warmed. The entire process is done by hand, and because each piece of bamboo is different, each has to be adjusted individually. A paste of lacquer is applied to the inner surface of the bamboo, which preserves it so well the instrument can last virtually forever. The final stage in the process is to tune the instrument. 
This determines the quality of its sound. Shakuhachi makers rely on their acute sense of pitch to delicately tune each instrument until the tone is perfect. The process is now complete. Arakisan, as we've just seen in the video, the word shakuhachi means one shaku, 0.8, and That's a shaku right. is about a foot. Uh, so theoretically, the instruments should all be the same size, but you've brought a whole array here, and yes. they're, they're all a little different, aren't they? But uh, this is instrument 1.7 I use for uh, uh, string ensemble. Now, okay. why would you use a different instrument for a d different... The quality It's a much uh, more like a, a musical instrument. This is not a musical instrument, but... Uh, uh, because it's more, more for ceremonial use? Yes, yes, ceremonial mm. use. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, when you play the, the shakuhachi, you, you, there's a lot of the, uh, there's a lot of yes. movement of the, 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 uh, the neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to get a particular uh, kind of vibrato? Uh, one reason to do that is a vibrato. The other one is uh, changing a pitch. Like, uh, if I don't uh, hold this is 1.6. Uh, uh, changes. So, this so is the pitch actually important. changes quite a lot mm -hmm. with the same fingering exactly. Right. Uh huh. What about the? Um, do you use the tanging? No. No. Oh, tanging. that's one another thing. We don't use tanging, and we use. A Finger instead to attack like a. The trill. Trill. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Uh, it's it's a sound that seems to come from another world. Oh. There's a kind of spooky sound <laughs> spooky. about it. Oh, obake mitai. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess comes from that slurring uh -huh. that you get. Now let's take a quick look at how and when the people started playing the shakuhachi in Japan. The shakuhachi was introduced into Japan in the 8th century from China. This instrument was made around that time, making it one of the oldest of its kind in Japan. This ancient shakuhachi has six finger holes, and its surface has been decorated with delicate carving. Originally, it would have been used for playing music at the emperor's court. But in the 9th century, the shakuhachi was excluded from all compositions of traditional court music. After that, it disappeared from the mainstream of Japanese music. The shakuhachi made a comeback in the 17th century, thanks to Buddhist monks who wandered from town to town, wearing basket-like wicker hats that covered their faces. Known as komuso, they were adherents of the Fukei sect of Zen Buddhism, which emphasized playing the shakuhachi as a spiritual practice in place of doing zazen meditation. The dimensions of their flutes became the standard for the modern instrument, and even though playing the shakuhachi as a religious practice was banned in the late 19th century, the pieces they played formed the basis for the classical repertoire. Gradually, shakuhachi music caught on again, and today it's considered a mainstream instrument. Sometimes it's played together with other traditional instruments, such as the shamisen or the koto. It's also used to accompany traditional Japanese folk songs. A concerto by the composer Toru Takemitsu featuring the shakuhachi is now considered a masterpiece of contemporary music. Entitled November Steps, it had a major impact internationally.
Shakuhachi music has evolved over the past 1,200 years. Now, this is considered one of the most representative of Japan's musical instruments. When you talk about Zen, the image that always comes to mind immediately is of the monks sitting cross-legged mm -hmm. in meditation. Uh, the fact that shakuhachi playing was used by one particular school of Zen Buddhism for training, it was uh, completely new to me. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain something about that, perhaps in a little more detail? When the uh, uh, Fuke sect organized, uh, they needed the uh, uh, Tokugawa central government permission and uh, they made a huge uh, nonsensical history to connect Fuke, who is a 12th century Zen monk, to uh, 17th century Komuso. And uh, Edo government took it because they could they thought they use uh, as an uh, intelligence agency um, to let them walk around the remote uh, area. They used the monks for spies? Right. That's interesting. Reporter. Ah. <laughs> In, instead of the practice of Zen meditation, mm -hmm. you can get the same effect from yeah. playing the flute, but shakuhachi. Oh, yes. In Shakuhachi, there's a word, Ichi on Jobs. Uh, direct translation could be a one tone to get the line enlightened. Mm. Uh, concentrate in one note, then forget everything and. Uh, just blow uh, with empty mind. Mm. Mm. That's the one big training part of Shakuhachi. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Are there specific techniques that are used for that? No technique, just mm. concentrate, blowing any kind of sound, um, fuzzy sound or uh, clear sound. Or any breathing Just techniques? Breathing technique is abdominal through, get the air through the bottom of the feet. You breathe through the soles of your feet? Right. Uh-huh. Inhale. And then oh, you, uh, you, yes. you, you feel like yeah. you're doing that anyway. You know, imagine that, yeah. It sounds uh -huh. most philosophical. You Take mean, that uh, air you breathe from the other side of the globe. From the other side of the earth? Earth. Oh, wow. From Brazil. Okay. You imagine <laughs> that you're breathing through the soles of your feet from the other side of the earth, and then deep that, abdominal breathing. Don't you feel something calm if you concentrate, if you try to concentrate mm. on breathing? In any position, standing position, sitting position, walking, or... Mm. Yeah, that's the actual Zen life. Mr. Araki has just explained how philosophical the shakuhachi music was, but we wonder how he spent a day as a musician. It's six o'clock in the morning. Araki always starts the day by practicing on the shakuhachi for a couple of hours. Before he begins playing, he warms up his shakuhachi, as this improves the sound of the instrument. Every day, he starts by blowing the same tone for the first 10 minutes, without using any specific technique. This practice known as nobuki is used by shakuhachi players to make sure that the basic tone of their playing remains constant.
Araki says that although he clears his mind of all thoughts while he is playing, as soon as he has finished, he knows how well it has gone. Araki has several shakuhachi that he inherited from his ancestors. These are a powerful source of strength for him in his pursuit of Ichion Jobutsu. Araki always looks forward to seeing and tasting the first shoots of Fukinuto, a wild plant that grows alongside the rice paddies. Since moving here from Tokyo five years ago, Araki says he feels much more balanced mentally living in the countryside. He enjoys the blessings of nature, and that sense of equilibrium has greatly helped him in playing the shakuhachi. After his morning practice, Araki continues playing on and off throughout the day until the evening, taking short breaks from time to time. Tono is a quiet, charming little town. I've just had a brief look at the town, so now I would like to show you around. Tono lies between the mountains and the Pacific coast. This area was once an important focal point for the local economy. However, their entertainment was very limited, and the people would fill their evenings exchanging elaborate folk tales. As in a basin, migration of residents here was limited, so the popular stories were kept within and accumulated over time, and soon it became known for its exotic folk tales, which were passed on by word of mouth. This is Kappabuchi, or Brook of Kappa, which is a mythical river creature. The Kappa can be likened to something similar to the Western troll. In Tono, People romanticized that they lived in this brook a long time ago. The locals often refer to an old tale of a mischievous kappa which tried to pull a horse into this brook. This is Miyoshi Shirahata. At 94 years of age, she is the oldest and most popular storyteller in Tona. She says that when she was a little girl, she often stayed overnight with her father in a log cabin on the mountains. She would pester him to tell her story after story until she fell asleep. In 1910, folklorist Kunio Yanagita compiled some 119 stories from Tono. For the first time, these tales were recorded. This book, The Tono Story, is considered to be the origin of Japanese folklore study. In it, you can find many tales of animals, hobgoblins, in addition to local residents. Among Tono's folk tale, the horse is a recurrent theme. As Tono was a horse breeding district in the past, People considered horses to be a precious resource for the community. But among to the 
book called Tono Story, there was a strong attachment between people and horses. One of them is a tale of farmer's daughter who fell in love with their family horse. This forbidden love made her father so furious that he killed the horse by cutting off his neck. The daughter clung onto the horse's neck and both arose into the sky. Today, they were seen as guardians of women's health and happiness. Here is a traditional house called Magaria. This unique structure is designed as an all-in-one horse stable and house, in which a family looks after its horses under the one roof. I visited a farmer, Mr. Morigi Kikuchi. His family has kept horses for more than 100 years. Look at this huge white horse. She's more than 70 years old in human terms. Moriji and his horse always work together in his farm in Cypress Mountains. I did not think he could do this kind of work without her. In the olden days, every farmer had at least one or two horses at home. We gave them a thick bedding of straw, which soon became ideal manure for growing vegetables. We were happy with this lifestyle because the horse was part of our family. People in Tono seemed very proud to have so many fascinating folk tales to tell. I wonder if we have any tales to pass on to our children. Here, people live a life similar to that when they enshrined the horse, farmed the land, made charcoal in the day and told tales at night. It reminded me of a time when people and nature lived in harmony.
This is Weekend Japanology on NHK World TV and Radio Japan. This week we're in Tono visiting the shakuhachi player Mr. Kodo Araki V. Araki-san, about five and a half years ago you moved from to Tokyo to live here in mm -hmm. Tono, which is, I mean, it's, it's way off the beaten track, it's way up in the mountains. You must have had a pretty good reason to, to move here. Yes, the uh, folk tales of Tono uh, always in my mind mm. many, many years and uh, uh, besides uh, living in Tokyo, uh, basically I do not like to live in a big city mm. and uh, even making shakuhachi to uh, uh, make a urushi mix or the lacquer. The lacquer. Oh. Um, uh, the gas of the, the truck. The, uh, yeah. The pollution from the cars uh, and trucks. Uh, yeah, oh. air pollutions and etc. And then uh, felt like I had to even breeze. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and uh, one time I had, a, to, I had a chance to visit the tunnel and I. Right away, I decided to, yeah, yeah, it's a place. <laughs> it does seem a very beautiful place, I must it say. It's very clean. Do you recommend people to play the shakuhachi mm -hmm. rather than listening to it? Play the shakuhachi is the most uh, important thing and uh, listening uh, and a good example and yeah critically mm. <laughs> <laughs> now let's take a look at his recent activities Kodo Araki the fifth spends half his time each month away from his hometown Tono, traveling around Japan giving concerts. He often makes guest appearances alongside other Japanese traditional musicians. Araki is 65 years old. After graduating from university in Japan, he moved to the United States, where he studied and worked for 25 years, trying to popularize the shakuhachi. He has taught it at a number of universities, including the University of Washington. He also has a master's degree in ethnomusicology from Wesleyan University. His career has been most unusual, especially given his position as an Iemoto, the head of a traditional shakuhachi guild. Many people visit Araki to study with him. They all have their own reasons and motivation for playing the instrument. There's a spiritual component as well as a musical one. I can't really explain it. My aim is to develop the same sensitivity that Japanese people had in the old days. For me, I find that getting together with other people playing the shakuhachi leaves me feeling fulfilled and refreshed. At first, I didn't feel anything special. I just carried on playing because it was fun. It was great just to produce that sound. But recently, I felt something deeper. Basically, there are no instructions on the score apart from the fingerings. So I have to borrow my technique from my teacher. In his classes, we learn not just with our ears, but also with our eyes. In a shakuhachi class, the students play alongside their teacher. He imparts his skill by allowing them to observe him in action. Araki tries to express the tradition of this music, which has been passed down since the 17th century, while drawing on his own experience, both at home and abroad. This is the way Araki is working to pass on this musical tradition to his students.
when you sit face to face with your students, mm -hmm. looking each other in the face, what is it that you're imparting to them, or that they're learning from you? Yeah, generally I uh, feel, and most of the stuff coming from uh, through the year, mm -hmm. he's doing all right. He's doing unnecessary thing, or he's not doing he should do. But I guess I uh, see there as a total uh, uh -huh. structure. What kind of people come to you these days wanting to learn the shakuhachi? I presume they're not all people who want to be professional musicians. Mm. People, if one can step back even five minutes uh, from his stress and busy daily life to concentrate on something or facing to uh, shakuhachi and blow into it's mm. a very very precious time five mm. minutes is a time mm. for um, busy salaryman for example uh -huh. yeah many people say so uh, 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 we get the relaxation and uh, mm. uh, more uh, power and uh, mm. uh, uh, wants to work mm. harder. And, uh, mm. Now, in the video, they talked a little bit about um, you spent 25 years living in America. Yes. Which is, it seems to be quite unusual for somebody in your, in your field. What, what made you decide to go to America in the first place? Uh, it's a very uh, negative uh, reason. Uh, when I was 19, 20, I had a bronchitis, uh -huh. um, tuberculosis. Oh, really? And uh, I thought I could. I cannot be uh, an active, busy uh, performer. Mm. At that time, one of my uh, father's students living in Los Angeles said uh, to me, uh, why don't you come here and study uh, Western music at UCLA? That the boat came. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's the... Uh -huh. So you jumped on the boat. Jumps on the boat. It's interesting that, I mean, a lot of your American students, in fact, I would think almost all of your American students, would not have uh, a sense of history. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the history that the shakuhachi is, has in Japan. Um, and yet, it was obviously still something that had a lot of meaning for them in their daily lives in modern America. The instrument seems to, it has a very ancient sort of feel about it, but obviously mm -hmm. it still is relevant to, to modern society. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Yes. Uh, Shakuhachi has so many faiths uh, as an instrument and as a re religious tool. So... Uh, Construction itself is such simple, and uh, so anything could be done. Uh. Yeah. Chromatic scale or anything. Uh. And it's appreciated not only in Japan, but it's getting popular the mm -hmm. world over. Yes. Well, even going back to the 1960s when Araki-san had his American students, that was uh, actually quite surprising. But uh, now there's actually, what, uh, an international festival? Yes, it was held in Colorado in uh -huh. the United States in 1998. Let's take a look at the festival. Boulder, Colorado lies at the foot of the Rocky Mountains, 1,600 meters above sea level. In July 1998, a week-long World Shakuhachi Festival took place in the city. Around 340 people gathered for events at various places in the city, including Colorado State University. 140 of them were from Japan. 
The others were from various countries, including Australia, Canada, Holland, and the USA. During the festival, 45 workshops were held, led by the heads of five traditional Japanese shakuhachi guilds. The workshops were so popular, they were completely sold out. Araki was one of the five master musicians who were demonstrating how to play classical shakuhachi pieces. Every evening, concerts were held, some of them introducing new approaches to shakuhachi music, such as joint performances with contemporary dance. The highlight was a concert by all five of the shakuhachi masters together. This kind of performance would be highly unusual in Japan, since long-established differences between the various guilds would pose too many obstacles. The festival was a rare opportunity for shakuhachi players from around the world to interact with master musicians from the Japanese tradition, with both sides drawing inspiration from this meeting. The festival was introduced in the paper. Boulder County's newspaper introduced yes. this festival like this. The monks of emptiness. <laughs> you could see in the video the people, the passers-by were kind of, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. But how did you appreciate it, the festival? It was... Uh, most of the thing is uh, the hot air means not, not I mean, uh, f uh, physically it's... I mean, temperature was hot, but uh, mm. also uh, people's emotion. So uh, enthusiastic. Enthusiastic and uh, sincere. Mm. Uh, and uh, we had a classes of beginners and uh, advanced. And I, when I said the uh, breathing technique, and the class said, oh! Mm. <laughs> Did you explain to them about breathing through the soles of their feet? Yes. Uh -huh. And they could tell right away <laughs> the difference of breathing. And we... Uh, uh, this is an uh, international uh, shakuhachi oh. uh, started oh. by um, Mr. Yokoyama Katsuya, and uh, his daughter is an artist. Excellent. And, and this is... Uh, uh, everybody wear this and <laughs> play. All the pa participants uh, in the festival. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, you played, played in There's so many, but uh, wasn't enough. And so many people came. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I think anybody would want <laughs> one of those. <laughs> the Maybe you should, on you should make some more. <laughs> <laughs> Is phrasing of foreign players different from Japanese? No, the same. Ah, the same. Yeah. Oh, the same. yeah, yeah. Mm. Neptune Kaizen, uh, oh, yes. who is a yeah. great shakuhachi player. We should probably yeah. just explain for our, for our viewers that uh, he's an uh, American, American who's yes. been living in Japan yes. now mm -hmm. for a long time, yeah. he's a professional mm -hmm. shakuhachi player. And he uh -huh. mixes the shakuhachi with more modern right. style of music. Yes. Mm -hmm. He has his own activity, his style mm -hmm. established. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, Lily Lee uh, in Australia. Uh, uh -huh. There's uh, lots of activity, but his base is the one tone to concentrate. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh. that's. So he has already his base. Yeah. reached the yeah. level. Yeah. It's it's such a quintessentially yeah. Japanese mm -hmm. sounding instrument. I wonder why that is that that, that, that difference is Actually, not there. Actually, uh, shakuhachi sounds all individual, uh, just like uh, his voice. Uh, ah. The construction is so uh, simple, and uh, uh, we can tell who's playing, who's playing, uh, uh -huh. and, uh, and so individual. Make your make your own shakuhachi <laughs> is. 
the most uh, important thing. Alexan, thank you so much for being with You're us welcome. on the program. It's really been wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you. And we'll see you all again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.